Hi, welcome back. I'm Kevin, and this is Media Union. What I'm trying to do here is try to build a good case for how I've set up my subwoofer. So in my last video, I talked about setting up the subwoofer using just some commonsensical approaches, using, you know, actually reading through the manual and saying, oh, this is how you time align your sub. Well, we also came away at the end of that video that I have this notch between 85 and 95 hertz. And it's not a big notch, um, it's about 5 dB. And I kind of thought, geez, I, I really want to figure out what's wrong with this thing and make sure I can get a really flat read on this room. So I did research over the last three weeks, uh, listened to some just internet pundits, listened to some people who are acousticians, listen to people who set up home theaters. So I, I even did reading. I went and looked at white papers. I you know, read some articles at Sound on Sound. I just went out and looked at a lot of different things and kind of came away with, there's certain ways that you can set up a small room, Project Studios subwoofer. And so what I did is I followed some of these basic tenants that these people have laid out, picked and chowed, mm, picked and choose from among those and kind of came away with what I think is a good approach to setting up the subwoofer. Is it that far different than what I did last time? No, pretty close. But I want to show you how much we can over rev on measurements. And that's coming from me who loves to measure. Um, over measuring can kind of leave you questioning, but the most important thing that gets you out of that questioning state is using your ears. And so I think that's what I want to leave this uh, video on a positive note is after we go through and I show you all the things I did, I'm really excited by this room. If I didn't have REW showing me graphically that there's this notch in my room, uh, I never would have noticed it. I just completed an album for a, uh, a full length album for a, a, a client. They really love the mix. It's translated well to their car to their iPod. Yes, they actually still use an iPod. And they really love the mix and they love the mastering. So all of that to say that I've got this notch between 85 and 95 hertz, they didn't notice it. They didn't even care. They loved the album either way. So that's the positive thing. Sometimes we can trust the graphics in our eyes. Sometimes we have to trust our heart and our ears. So let's go into looking at what I did over the last three weeks, and hopefully I don't bore you to death. Um, if so, sorry about that, but for those of you who hang around to the end, there might be something interesting for you to see. All right, let's dig into this. Poor subwoofer installations usually suffer from too much or poorly defined bass. Often there is an obvious hole in the frequency spectrum in the crossover region between the satellite speakers and the subwoofer. So what I want to show you is the three groups of axial waves that exist within my studio. Starting from the front of the studio to the back, I have four groups of 40, 79, 119, and 159. From the floor to the ceiling, I have two groups of 68 and 136. And from side to side, I have three groups of 59, 118, and 177. All right, so let's dive in a little bit more specifically, like looking at the different groups of modes. Let's look at 159 and 79. Now you'll notice that each of these curtains are peaks. They're peaks of the wave. So here's an example of, you've got peaks, five peaks, but you've also got four valleys or troughs. Now what's important in this is that as those waves exist within the room, there's those valleys and troughs, if you align two peaks, you're getting an additive energy. And so in this case, if you take 159 and 79 and you line them up, you're gonna get a additional energy at the front wall, you're gonna get it in the middle, and you're gonna get it at the back wall but you're also gonna get some kind of null areas around just, just past the walls. So that's why it's important to understand all the different axial modes that exist within your room, because then you can understand where they exist in the room and how that they can add or subtract energy from the room. All 
All right, so let's go back to the REW plot for when I added the subwoofer. You'll notice that between 80 and 95 hertz, I've got that null point. Now we're only talking about um, axial waves. There's two more types of nodes that exist within a room, and those are oblique and tangential. So suffice it to say that there is a lot of energy around um, 40 hertz, between 40 and 50 hertz that you can see on the plot, but we're also seeing that the waves uh, between 80 and 95 hertz are all intersecting in such a way that it creates this null spot. So now that we know that there's that null that exists in the room, my question to myself was, is there some setup me uh, methodology or process that I missed? So some people said, oh yeah, you need two subs. Oh, you need to move the sub around. You got to do all these different things. And so in my research, there were some things that I thought were very important to make sure I covered and clarified as I was doing this process. So let's get into those now. All right, so in all my research, I have five takeaways whenever setting up a subwoofer. Number one, the sub should always be the same distance as the monitors from the listening position. In my case, I'm using 42 inches. Number two, it should always be in front of the listening position, not behind, not to the side. Number three is, it should always be placed away from corners and not splitting the width of the room. Number four is, crossovers should be set or the crossover on the sub should be set at about 80 or 85 hertz. That's important because it allows your satellite speakers to work where they're most efficient. And then lastly, when you're doing your setup, most people like to monitor or uh, mix at a, at a reasonable level, around 75 dB. So make sure that you're using that as your volume. So when I was doing my testing, I basically chose to keep the subwoofer in a half circle that you see on your screen. Uh, I measured out from the wall 60 inches, 65 inches, and 70 inches. I did different measurements of where the microphone was within the room. And I kept the subwoofer on the left-hand side of the room. I basically moved that subwoofer away from the wall certain distances and certain distances from the uh, listening position. And here are the results of all those different tests. So as you can see, I did a ton of sweeps. And with each sweep, I changed certain parameters. So I started with the uh, listening position mic in one area, 60 inches from the wall, 65 inches from the wall, 70 inches from the wall. And then I moved the subwoofer closer to the super chunk, further away from the super chunk in the corner, and then increments of seven inches from the wall, almost at the wall, seven inches from the wall, 14 from the wall, 21 from the wall. And then I just moved that sucker around. And from that, I got this plethora of sweeps. So you're gonna ask me, how did I sort through all this information? So first things first, I looked at SPL. I wanted to see if anything had really changed in the low end, if there were any anomalies with any of the uh, frequencies, specifically around 80 to 95. I wanted to see what was happening there. Then I switched over into the um, uh, RT60, and then I started picking through them, just seeing what was uh, giving me too much RTA, or sorry, too much RT60, what was not giving me enough RT60 in the low end. So I sorted through all of those. And then I eventually got to a point where I was looking at clarity and I was picking through which, um, which sweep gave me the best clarity. And what I ended up uh, working myself into is just a simple comparison between number 11 and number three. So then what I did is I jumped over to looking at RT60 decay and did some comparisons there. I wanted to make sure that I understood how they were both decaying, especially in the low end. Um, so then I started looking at uh, decay, just decay itself from the impulse down. Um, I wanted to see how each was responding between 12 and, and um, number three. So then what I did is I got to the waterfall, then I went into the spectrogram, went back to phase, 
did some comparison again with clarity just wanted to understand waterfall spectrogram rt60 rt60 decay and then just making sure that um, between the two that i was going to pick i was going to make sure i got the best of all those specifics that we've already talked about that we really know is important rt60 within the room we really need to make sure we have good musical clarity within the room and so with that what i ended up doing was choosing number 12 for the location all right so after all of that analysis all those sweeps all that tail chasing we've come away with a methodology in which we set up the subwoofer we've got a lot of samples of that subwoofer moving around the room doing some different things we've got all the data from moving that subwoofer and running all those those uh, sweeps but in the end it didn't really change the problem we were looking at which is the null point of 88 hertz but what was good about that is we know that by moving that subwoofer around it impacted rt60 it impacted clarity it impacted uh, the spectrogram it impacted spl so it's good that we can use rew to do that for us to show what is the best thing and and that's really what i want us to come away from this video is in this journey we've kind of assumed one thing tried to do all that and the data doesn't really show any improvements it just shows variation and that's where it's important that we understand that we trust our heart and trust our ears more than we trust a bunch of graphs and data we have to get to a point where we can balance the two and that's what i hope you've gotten out of this video so we didn't solve the null point at 88 hertz so next video we're going to be talking about sbir or speaker boundary interference response so if you have any questions just leave a comment below and i will see you next time and i hope you take care of yourself and have a good holiday